Hello, and welcome to Powell's Books at Cedar Hills Crossing. We are extremely excited and honored to host tonight's guest author, Jim Butcher, with his newest book in the Dresden Files series. Harry Dresden is both a wizard and a private investigator in a modern version of Chicago. His duty is to stand between the innocent and the spectrum of supernatural threats. Through the course of the series, he has battled warlocks, zombies, vampires, werewolves, demons, and many other creatures. And while his opponents forever seem to be more powerful than himself, Harry never backs down from the challenge. He is always ready and willing to put his life on the line to protect his friends and allies, and usually has an audacious strategy to defeat his enemies. Armed with a staff, shield bracelet, blasting, blasting wad, rod, Bob the Skull, his friends and allies, and his one-liners, Harry Dresden has become a huge fan favorite among the sci-fi fantasy fandom. Besides the Dresden Files series, Jim Busher is also the author of the six-book Codex Alera fantasy series. The newest Dresden Files novel, Skin Game, is the 15th book in the series. Please join me in welcoming the best-selling author of the Dresden Files, Jim Butcher. First, uh, uh, yes, my hair is long. <laughs> I, I told everybody it was going to grow back. I said that. I promised. Uh, mission accomplished. Okay. <laughs> so, this is a, a question and answer type thing um, because I, I'm, I'm kind of a terrible speaker when there's nobody to, to work with me. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to need a, a straight man. Somebody has to ask a question. Here we go. First of all, I want to say thank you for butters. <laughs> you are welcome, for Butters. <laughs> Will we ever see Mavra again? Yes. Oh, wow. yeah. One of the rare times I give you an unequivocal answer. <laughs> uh, in a magenta shirt here. You totally got me on the April Fool's Day joke. Oh, did, I, I totally got you on the April Fool's Day joke? I will tell the people who perpetrated that. <laughs> um, I thought that was hilarious, the, the, the Harry Dresden Broadway musical. That, that, oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> they, dropped, they, dropped, they dropped just enough names to make it seem like, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, they did a Spider-Man musical, so, uh, so I thought that was, that was fairly brilliant. Right here. How do you push past the part when you're reading it and you look at it and you say, oh my god, I think this is tall crap. <laughs> okay, how do I push on to finish the book when I get to the part and I'm reading it and I think, oh, it's total crap, and, and how do I keep going after it when I, when I hit that what I'm writing? I mean, um, funny, but you look at it and you're going, this is not what I wanted it to be. Well, often what I do is I go to the refrigerator and I think to myself, this will be empty if I don't get back to work. <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a really subjective sort of thing, um, and as a writer, you, you've got to realize that just because you think it's awful and, and, and it stinks and your instincts are screaming at you that it's terrible, uh, uh, sometimes that's just an emotional reaction that doesn't actually apply to what you've written. Uh, uh, a lot of times, I'll go back and look at stuff that I thought was awful when I was getting it done, but I'll go back and read over it at, you know, at the end of the book and go, oh, I don't see why I was so upset about, that's fine. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, it's one of those things where you just have to have a certain amount of professionalism and keep going. Green shirt. So you've done the fantasy, you've done the urban fantasy, you're going to do steampunk. Would you ever consider, like, uh, cyberpunk? Would I ever consider writing a cyberpunk? Uh, uh, I mean, since I've done, done fantasy and urban fantasy and, and now I'm doing a steampunk series. Um, sure, I guess. I mean, it's not really my favorite genre, uh, uh, but I could, I could do some kind of matrixy thing if I wanted to. Um, uh, I don't know if I'll ever go ever go and do that because I'm I'm a fantasy author, sir. Uh, <laughs> unless I write some, I mean, there's some serious there's some serious science fiction that I want to write that, that that's based around Camelot. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, uh, right over here. Um, could you give us any more information about the Summer Court and what their specific role is? Could I give you more information about the Summer Court or what their specific role is? Yes, of course. Next question. <laughs> Have you ever felt like I've written myself into a corner and don't know where to go next? And what do I do when that happens? Um, yes, I do that all the time. Um, uh, and you just you keep going. You find a way to keep going. You go back and change something. You cheat. Uh, uh, you do something to change the situation your character's in, and, and you know you make, make something cool happen. 
anytime you're stuck in a corner like that, you don't have a problem. You have the opportunity to do something really cool. You j the only challenge is to figure out what the really cool thing you need to do is. Uh, uh, but, but you have to realize when you're writing, that's not a problem. That's your brain telling you you've got an opportunity to make something awesome happen and you're missing it. Uh, so go back and, and, and figure it out. Right over here. Do you have an end plan when you start? Do I have an end plan when I start? Yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got to. I've got to know where the end is going to end up. I always know at least, at very least, I know where the book's going to start, where the book's going to end, uh, kind of a big old flashy high special effects budget scene in the middle, <laughs> and like a bunch of one-liners that I want to do. <laughs> uh, right here. Um, can you give us more information about the steam, new Steampunk book? Uh, can I give you more information about the new Steampunk oh, yeah. series? Um, it's, it's, done, it's not done. Uh, the first one's about 80% done. I was going to have it finished before I left on this tour, except there was this horrible dental issue, which, uh, uh, did you know that teeth can explode? <laughs> teeth can explode. <laughs> did you know that they can give you Novocaine shots directly into the tooth? <laughs> they can do that. <laughs> Who don't want them to do that? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, but back to the Steampunk series. Um, uh, right now it's contracted for three books. It's uh, called The Cinder Spires. Uh, the first uh, book is called The Aeronauts Windless. Um, I would like to say that people are going to love it because uh, uh, it's got a cool world and it's got great characters and there's a lot of humor and action and it's very, you know, kind of intricately plotted. Uh, but really that's, that's not going to happen. They're going to love it because of the cats. <laughs> Uh, I mean, honestly, it's, I, I never should have. I never should have written that little bastard. He's going to totally upstage the entire rest of the crew. <laughs> uh, uh, right here, sitting down. Do you have a favorite or least favorite character in the Dresden Files? Like, who is your least favorite universe? Do I have a favorite or least favorite character in the Dresden Files universe? No, not really. I kind of like them all. Um, uh, they're characters that that. There's nobody that I really don't like writing because I'm a petulant child and, and you know I would want to do my job if there was somebody I didn't like to write. Uh, but there's nobody that I just go, oh, I'm, I'm only going to write him, or, or they're special. I, I, I want to torment them all equally. <laughs> uh, uh, over here. Thank you. My questions? Um, yeah, statement of the question, actually. First question, uh, what's going on with Oregon? Because it went dark in uh, uh, Ghost Story. They just said it went dark, that's all they said. I mean, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, the, 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 the Paranatters Lost is, is what happened, but anyway. Okay, basically, um, I was one of the two guys in Oregon chose to do the, uh, the, the Dresden Lives LARP, and it would really help me out if I could get some more information. But the other question was basically, uh, I'm throwing a character creation get-together on Sunday. You're probably going to be busy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I going to be busy, I'm going to be, like, across the country. So. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> But I can't play the Dresden Files game. No, I wasn't asking you to play. It's just a character creation game. Oh, okay, okay. Let us speak to the brain. Yeah, I have other ideas. Yeah, I, but I'm, the, I'm like the only person who can't play the Dresden Files role-playing game on account of uh, I'm a power gaming weasel. <laughs> it would be completely impossible to GM me. I mean, can you imagine having that discussion with me? No, it is that way, and I'll write it that way. That's <laughs> Yet, if I'm, the, if I'm the GM, it's too much like work. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm glad everybody else is having a good time with it. Uh, here at the very back in the hat. Are you ever going to write more Spider-Man? Am I ever going to write more Spider-Man? Probably not. Uh, 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 Marvel doesn't really pay you in money. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that wasn't the reason I wrote the, the, the first Spider-Man to begin with, because it was already, I took a huge pay hit to, to write that. I, I wanted to write it because I wanted to write Spider-Man. Um, but I, I don't know if I'll be if I'll be doing any more with them. Uh, um, there's there's other people who are who are interested in asking me to, to play with their product. I might I might be doing that at some point. But, uh, okay, uh, right here. Is the Jade Court going to come into play anytime soon? Is the Jade Court going to come into play anytime soon? Uh, only if, uh, if they're kind of isolationists. I mean, they're, they're isolationists where they they like to stay inside China. Actually, they don't even like to stay inside China. They like they like to stay inside Chin. They don't really believe in this, this newfangled China concept. Uh, uh, so, so really, you know, you won't see him. We might see an agent of theirs at some point. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, uh, right back here in the middle. Hi. I have a two-part question. Uh, what inspired you to write your first uh, Dresden Files game, and did you expect it to go on for 
Uh, what inspired me to write my first Dresden Files book? And did I expect it to go on for 15 books? Um, I originally started writing the Dresden Files, uh, uh, the, I, well, I'm in my writing class with my writing teacher, and she's been trying to teach me good stuff uh, for years, and I've been resisting it because I knew better. <laughs> because I had a degree in English literature <laughs> with an emphasis in creative writing. So, you know, I knew what I was talking about, whereas she had merely published 40 novels. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, one semester I decided I was going to prove to her how wrong she was. Uh, uh, I was and the, the means I chose to employ, uh, uh, I decided I was going to fill out all her little worksheets, I was going to do all the little forms and outlines, and I was going to be her good little writing monkey, and she would see exactly what terrible cookie-cutter pablum crap emerged from that kind of a rigid process. And so I wrote the first book of the Dresden Files. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which, uh, uh, which showed her. Uh, <laughs> She said, after she read the first chapters, you've done it. And I was like, what? Because, I mean, she, she was a harsh critic. I mean, like, she would, like, read a chapter, roll it up, lean across the desk, and bat me on the head with it and say, what were you thinking? And I, was, I mean, she was that kind of critic. And uh, uh, she said, this will sell. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, you should, you should, you know, plan what you're going to do with it. And I'm like, uh, okay. And I went home and I came back uh, to the next week's session and I said, uh, I've got an outline here for a story about 20 books long with like a big old apocalyptic trilogy at the end. Do you think that'll be good? <laughs> and she's like, and she kind of looks at me because she understands that I'm too stupid to understand that I'm never going to sell that many books. Uh, the odds against her are astronomical. Uh, but she doesn't want to discourage me. So she just kind of looks back at me and gives me this slow blink and says, yeah, I think if you can sell 20 books, should be doing fine. <laughs> uh, like that, I mean, it was the most dry, deadpan response. Uh, looking, back, looking back at it. But because I didn't know it was impossible, I went ahead and did it. Uh, so yes, I thought it would be here, because I, I, I have an outline for you know, 20 books, and then a big, big trilogy at the end. Let's see, over here. Uh, how do I write Chicago so well, even though I don't live there? Um, I, I don't write it all that well. I, um, you know, we should, well, then, then you should know that there's no parking lot around the baseball stadium in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who builds a baseball stadium without a parking lot? That's crazy. We're going to tailgate. <laughs> but uh, the answer is uh, Chicago. Um, they, they do that there. Um, yeah, I, I, I missed a lot of de uh, details early on because, you know, I, I, I didn't break minimum wage as a writer until about 2008. <laughs> and uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of travel budget for going to Chicago for research. But uh, now it's much easier. Now I, now I have all kinds of fun because not only can I go, uh, uh, but, you know, the Internet has expanded and Google has, ex has expanded. You know, I, when I was writing Skin Game, uh, I was writing the, the, this particular fight scene with this, where, and, and one, of the, one of the bad guys kicks a car out in front of one of the good guys. And uh, uh, then I'm like, wait a minute, I know exactly where they are. Let me check that on, on Google Maps. And I went down, and I could very clearly see the no parking signs on either side of the street, all the way up and down uh, of that boulevard. So I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do? Oh wait, no, it's fine. They have these giant concrete planters there. You can kick one of those. <laughs> so that's made the research easier. I've also had, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, a guy who worked in Chicago SWAT come up to me and say, hey, when you wrote this scene in this short story with the sniper on the roof and you specified which lights had gone, he, he put out and everything, um, you know, I really want to know who you talked to about that when you were setting that up because we sort of like to keep track of people with that kind of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I looked back at him and said, I, I, I did that. I, I did that with, with Google Earth. <laughs> I just kind of figured it out and goes, oh, damn, I hate the internet. <laughs> You're at the very, very back. Hi. 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 Uh, we got to see Harry on TV, and I was hoping that someday if you had thinking if you had complete creative control, that we'd see him on the big screen soon. Oh. The option has been has been uh, let out again. Um, it's been it's been it's been yeah. I've, I've optioned it again to a production company. Uh, uh, I'm not at liberty to tell you who at this time, uh, but they do have um, they they do have a large. They did have a large movie come out this summer, and I suspect most people in this room have already seen it. Um, we will see if uh, uh, we will see if it actually turns into anything. Uh, although personally, I would much rather see it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, HBO, and I'm noticing that True Blood is only on for one more year. <laughs> 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 
see anymore, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's Hollywood, so nothing, nothing is settled until the check is cleared. So we'll have to see. Uh, uh, yeah, right here. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, there's lots of references in the Dresden Files, you know, to the animated Lord of the Rings, Batman, X-Men. Is there any references that you wanted to make but you thought they were too obscure or didn't reference? References that I wanted to make that I thought were too obscure. You're asking me. You're asking the guy that who wrote in a reference from "They Live." Black <laughs> <laughs> hole. Uh, uh, no, no, no reference too obscure. Uh, uh, but I'm not a fairly complicated person, so I don't have a lot of obscure knowledge. I think. Uh, uh, I guess. I guess I could. I could drop a reference from. All that horrible Rooker Hauer movie uh, uh, with some kind of with the alien thing, and, and they need more guns. <laughs> split, split second? Okay. Um, oh, that's the only time you can watch a movie like that. Uh, uh, back here. Uh, one question Does Ebenezer get to have a relationship with Maggie? One question Does Ebenezer get to have a relationship with Maggie? That's the first question. Okay, does Ebenezer get to have a relationship with Maggie? Uh, uh, well, you just want me to tell you? I, 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 I mean, come on. Although, although if Ebenezer was, was really all that close to his family, you'd think he'd have been around Harry more. Uh, but anyway. Um, uh, here, in that. Are we going to hear more about the Oblivion War? Are you going to hear more about the Oblivion War? If you did, that would make it last longer. <laughs> come on. Uh, uh, possibly I might use it elsewhere. I might use it if I spin off something or something like that. Um, but, uh, uh, no, I mean, no, the, 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 the number one people on the list of people who cannot know about the Oblivion War is wizards. <laughs> uh, uh, you can't allow the wizards to know about that stuff because they just can't let it go. And they live for forever, so you've got to wait for centuries before they die, and, and, and hopefully the knowledge dies with them, you know. And, and they're, all, they're always writing books and maintaining libraries, and they're incredibly annoying for people who just want you to forget about stuff. <laughs> about your outline, how detailed is your outline and or character histories? How detailed is my outline and or character history? Uh, uh, it is exactly as detailed as the fan Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a little more detailed than that. Uh, uh, I, 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 when I first wrote the series, I wrote a, a series of two-sentence summaries of each, of each book. Uh, uh, and so I still have that. Uh, I made D&D character sheets of all the main characters. <laughs> Most of, most of it's, you know, a, a good part of it's in my head, uh, uh, or it's scattered through a couple of dozen notebooks that are lying around inside inside my room at home. So. Uh, over here. All the characters you've killed often have a codex Of all my characters who I've killed off inside the Codex Alera or Dresden Files, who was my favorite and or hardest to kill? Um, uh, it was probably hardest to kill uh, the character Sarai in, in Academus Fury because she was awesome, and that, that was it was a hard death. I mean, that that was where I went. Oh, I made you so I can kill you right here, and I made you cool so people would buy it. But uh, uh, you know, this is really hard to do this. Uh, sorry, honey. <laughs> Gaius probably had the best death. That was the one that was the most fun to write. Uh, well, I mean, there was this one other guy that I killed once. It was a little bit more fun, but that was a whole other reason. Uh, back here at the back wall, under the exit sign. Um, Alara series, have you done any plotting or outlining for a second series of Alara? Have I done any plotting or outlining for another Alara series? Nope. Uh, I've got a few ideas of where I could go back if I wanted to, uh, uh, but it's not on the table right now. I actually, uh, I actually, I figured it out once, and I'm going to have to live to be 153 years old to get all the books written at, at my current pace, so all the stories are in my head. So, you know, I mean, I've got a whole bunch of next story to get to that's going to explode if I don't let it out of my brain. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll be working on that. I could go back to Alara someday if I have to pay off my gambling debts or something. <laughs> uh, at the moment, not yet. I've I got a whole bunch of other things to do that, are, that will also be fun and cool. Uh, right here, young lady. Yes, you. What did I have to do to get my first book published? I had to pull my head out of my nether regions, mostly. <laughs> I, I mean, there was a whole bunch of writing. Actually, I had to write about eight books before I wrote one that was good enough to sell. Uh, and those books were awful, and it took a long time. 
Um, I had to travel around the country and meet various editors and agents at conventions. Uh, I had to put up with a whole bunch of people asking me every Christmas, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> I mean, there, are, there are all kinds of things like that. And that was really satisfying, too. Because at one point I was able to go, you know what? I think I just won't. <laughs> you know, was, after, after 12 or 13 years of, when are you going to get a real job at Christmas? Like, okay, cousin, like, no, I, I just won't get a real job. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> right here in the What was my inspiration for the Cinder Spires? Um, uh, I was at a LARP one night, and uh, uh, the game wrapped up at, at about 5 in the morning, and uh, I decided that I, I wanted to just drive everybody home and sleep in my own bed instead of sleeping in a tent for three hours and then driving home. Uh, so I'm in the car uh, with a carload of sleeping teenage boys, uh, uh, because though they swore to stay awake and help me stay awake all the way home, they, they promptly fell asleep. Um, <laughs> So I had uh, Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral, and the CD player playing real loud to help keep me awake. And as I was driving and the, the sun was coming up on the east, there was a huge uh, electrical storm rolling in from the west. And uh, uh, basically, uh, I found myself in a race with this storm trying to get to the, to the eastbound highway so that I could stay ahead of it as it kept coming closer and closer. And uh, it, was a nasty, it was a big, nasty electrical storm with a, a, a great you know, big front in front of it with uh, a hail and... And, 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 you know, lightning coming down, like, kapow, 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 just constantly coming down. And uh, uh, two, n two nine inch nails while I'm doing that. I'm, I'm going through, I'm like going, okay, 80, 85, 90, I can get ahead of this thing, I can do this. And, and while that was going on, this scene started playing in my head that turned into the opening chapter of Cinder's Fire. So, uh, uh, so that's where that came from. I, it was electricity. <laughs> No, when I started the Dresden Files, I knew how I wanted to end it. I kept it in mind. Uh, I haven't changed my outline. Um, uh, I've changed the order of some of the events, of, of story events that have happened since the beginning. But uh, uh, so far, it's, it, you know, I, I think I'd be a little dumb to tinker with it. It seems to be working. <laughs> so, 25 year old me was not real bright, but he apparently was onto something right here, so I'm going I'm to continue to trust him. <laughs> um, yes, what is your question? <laughs> uh, we definitely seem to have thrown the boat at the winter with that. Uh, what was your reasoning for that versus say, any other things that you wanted? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, what was my reasoning for throwing Harry and Molly to, win to winter? Uh, uh, versus because she, he says it seems that I'm really mean to Harry and Molly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but why throw them to winter instead of somewhere else? Because uh, winter's the worst place for them to be. And that's why. Uh, like really, I mean, it's it's. And, and let me be clear, okay? Let me let me let me say this unequivocally right now. I don't enjoy torturing my characters. I enjoy torturing all of you. It's just that my characters are really the only way I can do that without being locked away. So, so you know that that's kind of what I do. Uh, uh, let's see right here. Speaking of torture, when is the next book coming out? Hey, that's a bitch. I, work, I work six months on one of these things, and you guys are like day and a half. <laughs> don't get me wrong, that's an awesome problem to have. But uh, 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 I don't know, I'm going to have to write it first. I've got to finish the expires. I, sh I should be starting the next Dresden by uh, 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 July and we'll see how long it takes me to get it written. This year's been kind of a really slow year because I've done more traveling so far this year than I have in the previous three years combined. So uh, between that and blowing out my arm uh, and having to go through physical therapy where I couldn't write or type for more than an hour a day, it's, it's been kind of a slow year product-wise. Uh, anyway, uh, right here. First, thank you for staying true to Harry's inner goofiness and not allowing him to become too much godmother every time that happens. Oh, you're, uh, you're welcome for, for me maintaining Harry's internal goofiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never going to get away from that. It is quite endearing. Second, I'm one of the people who's going to be playing in his LARP. I'm going to be playing something that is fey and bloody. And I'm wondering if, okay, the Pyranitor's lost to something. So I wonder if you could give more details on that, because when I get here, in my, all my bloody bayness, I want to know if I'm going to want to cuddle up and make friends with the thing that beat the pair netters, or if I'm going to want to eat its face. 
Oh, you're never going to want to cuddle up with a thing that made friends, that, 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 that beat the paradise. But they might be my friends and cousins. Probably not. <laughs> Probably no, not. No, but I'm, you're, you're trying to trick me into telling you about the next book. It is... <laughs> uh, uh, right here behind her. First off, five hours for skin game. Uh, five hours? Five you had in five hours? You had skin game in five hours. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. And my question, sir, what? And my question, sir, is are you ever going to stop just. Ah! That's all I'm Am I ever going to stop just ah? I think it's important. Okay. Hades, all I'm saying. Hey, no, hey, would you stop? Would you, would you not spoiler anybody? I mean, you have to be conscious of this. There could be a riot, and I'm up at the front. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, okay. Uh, back here. <laughs> Is Harry Dresden ever going to get back to, to, to Dresden Investigations, to his, to his office and such? Maybe. Uh, on the other hand, maybe not. <laughs> That's one of those things that I'm, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, over here. <coughs> Who's my favorite character in the Dresden Files? I like writing Bob the Skull. Oh, yeah. yeah I like writing Mouse because Mouse is really suave and more cool than Harry Dresden. <laughs> no, seriously, Mouse is like Bond. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, well, yeah, well, it's not hard to be. It's not too hard to be much smarter than Harry does. <laughs> uh, uh, right back here. Yes. You mentioned Bob, and uh, I have to say that you know, seeing him uh, the, the dressing files on TV, I think that he Okay, for example, how much creative control do I have over the over the, the, the Dresden Files once uh, I've signed it over? That depends entirely upon the contract you sign. For the first, uh, for the first one, uh, I had no editorial or authorial input whatsoever, uh, uh, or at least none, none on paper. Uh, but it turns out that Robert Wolf, the guy who was on the ground making most of it, is a, uh, is a Roman history nerd who also runs his own D&D game, so we got on pretty well. Um, uh, so... Uh, well, I mean that's that's open to it. He's just, the character, but the characters were nothing like my characters, and that's open to interpretation. See, the point is, if you, we would have wanted to have Bob the Skull, either Bob the Skull would have, uh, as a skull, either he would have eaten up the entire special effects budget for every episode, or they would have has, had to use a puppet like the cat on Sabrina. <laughs> uh, the thing is, it doesn't cost me anything extra to blow up Chicago. It costs me no more to destroy the city than it does to leave the city standing when I'm writing a book. It's a little bit different than that in TV. Uh, uh, as, far, as far as Murphy goes, yeah, she was a brunette, but on the other hand, uh, that actress was the only one on the set who actually read the books. So, uh, <laughs> she was good. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but so I, I'm not prepared to cut her some slack, though. So. All right, one more question. Um, okay, right back here. Yes. What was my inspiration for the personality of Bob? Bob is like my inner puerile 14-year-old. He was actually, he was originally an NPC in a Warhammer game that I ran. Uh, uh, on the, on the, he, was, he, was, he was a servant, uh, uh, and in Warhammer, the Warhammer game, the, all these other classes that you play get all these skills and stuff and so on. Servant only gets one skill, and it's dodge blow. You know? and, and Bob happened to be an elf. Uh, I had to name him, so he, and I had to name him on the spur of the moment, so I named him Bob, and he was an elf. So he, from then on, he was Bob the Elf. And, uh, uh, and he was kind of the mouthy sidekick to, to one of the characters in the game, and ran around just being a mouthy sidekick all the time. And so uh, I decided to write Bob the Skull, so he would be a mouthy sidekick. Uh, initially, I, I told my writing teacher, uh, uh, I'm going to give him this kind of assistant, this, like this assistant spirit that lives in, inside a skull, or this assistant spirit that he's going to go to for information when it's super specialized magic stuff that he doesn't know about. And uh, she says, all right, well, that'll be fine, just as long as you don't make him a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> Which is writer term, uh, writer speak, for characters that just show up and dispense information and then go away and have no other participation in the story, like in all those 50s pulp movies. 
As you know, Bob, the worker ant's genetic makeup is such that, you know, uh, uh, so I decided to take the As You Know Bob and make him Bob, uh, you know, Bob the Skull, a literal talking head. Uh, I handed that over to her and she read it, looks at me and says, you think you're cute, don't you? <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to get some books signed here. Uh, first, before we do that, everybody stay where they are. Uh, uh, Janessa Allen, are you here, please? Janessa Allen? Where are you? Could you stand up, please? Hi, Janessa! Hi! Oh, you're adorbs! Okay. Oh, well, not as, uh, just you wait. Uh, well, go ahead.